Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Chaos Cloth in 5.3. Now, this is not a tutorial, more like a first impression. And to be honest, after making this video, I'm probably not going to touch this method uh, until I'm forced to. And you're going to see why here. So first things first, let's take a look at the actual results. So this is live, real-time Chaos Cloth simulation. The dress is going to be simulated. Additionally, it wouldn't make sense for the dress to move, but body parts not moving. So again, we have some jiggle physics here to really showcase it for science. Okay. So, all right. So let's press play real quick. Again, this is real time. I'm recording this with one RTX 4090 right now. So we're getting about 25 frames per second. And I did have to turn down the Chaos Cloth settings because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to do this. This is probably the best frame rate I can get. We're running this at epic settings as far as scalability goes. And it looks great. Um, as far as I know, it's using the old Chaos Cloth um, solver. So it's like nothing new as far as I know, but it's just a process that changed and one big major thing that changed, which we're gonna talk about here in a second. If you wanna learn how to do this, Unreal Engine actually came out with a pretty good documentation and there is a sample project that I actually have in this project here as well. So the new thing that came out was this thing called Cloth Asset. So if I go to our BP here, and you're going to see we have this Chaos Cloth. And this is where the chaos really starts. If I double click this Cloth Asset, actually, we're still simulating. So let's go minimize this and stop. So if I go to this Cloth Asset here, this is what was introduced in 5.3. And it's pretty much node base, blueprint, and it looks scary, which is not very good. A lot of people get really scared. So the workflow goes, you upload two static meshes. You have this static mesh right here, and you have this static mesh right here. So you have one for simulation, and then one for actually like the dress itself. One of the biggest changes in this version is that these static mesh no longer have to be skin. It does not have to have bones anymore. You can just export it out of Marvelous Design and import them here, and then it's going to be simulated for you, which is great. That means you don't have to skin or anything like that. The way the the problem is the delivery as far as the process goes. If you look at this right here, I'm not sure what's going on at Epic, but I feel like they're starting to move a lot of their processes to Node Blueprint system. Now I totally understand it is a game engine. But for an animator or a filmmaker trying to simulate clothing, this looks kind of scary. So to me, it's like, man, you have to find a balance because this might make sense for a gameplay kind of scenario, but for animation and simulating cloth, it could look a little bit daunting. And I'm seeing this in PCG, it's blueprint based. So somebody at Epic is going blueprint crazy and node based crazy, which is could be a good or a bad thing. So a couple of settings here. And, and what's crazy about this, all of these nodes, if you start clicking on them, you're going to really recognize some of these settings from the old method. And that's why I'm kind of like, why would you change the way it looks if it didn't have to? Because if I look at this solver right here, we have the number of iterations, max iterations. This pretty much increases the quality of your simulation. Like, why did you have to put it in this? And I know I'm kind of ranting right now. And as far as I know, this is going to be where they're going to head to. I think they're going to stop supporting the old method. So we are going to be forced to learn this. Um, so eventually I'm going to have to like, for real, for real, sit down and learn it unless I do it in Marvelous Design. Okay, so before I go, let me go ahead and show you what this currently looks like as far as Chaos Cloth uh, simulation in Unreal Engine 5.2 before the actual update. And this is what I was kind of talking about earlier. It's like, why make this a node-based system where this right here, so what you're looking at right here, this is the cloth config. These settings right here on the left side in this UI are the same exact settings as what we saw in this blueprint, right? So if they're technically doing the same thing, I wouldn't want to touch. If I saw this, right, I would run away from it. But this drop down and menus we're all kind of used to. And, and I know it's kind of like a rant, but it's really just positive 
feedback, in my opinion. It's if I look at this, if you look at a simulation, this is the same thing. We got the iteration count where we had the 555 earlier in the blueprint right here. To me, this looks less scarier than the blueprint node system. If I'm alone in that, that's my own opinion. But this is what it used to look like. Now, the decision to go to this, I, I don't know if, if it had to be done like this. And that's probably why they don't like me because I actually, you know, say what I feel. And I feel like this new process is just convoluted for no reason. And I'm not alone. I've talked to a couple of Unreal Engine users and they're like, we're not using that new method. We're going to use the old one because technically it's still using the same solver um, without obviously the skinning part. Like this cloth right here is skin. So it has bones and stuff like that. Uh, that the only benefit of the new one is you don't have to skin it. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my first impression of this 5.3 Chaos Cloth. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think. Are you going to be using the old method or the new method? Eventually, I think we're going to be forced to use the new one. So that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.